Hey crafters, welcome back. As promised, I'm going to do the run through on how to thread the quilter's choice. We've seen this about for a little while now. Spotlight have some great bargains every few months. I love my quilter's choice. It's easy to use. Remember, it is not computer. It's old school inside. So you're not going to have the needle down, needle up feature. You're going to have to tell it the tension itself. But I love it. So good wide feed dogs. It's easy to use. It's so smooth to do corners. And I love putting bias on with this machine. Any other machine and it was... Remember, there's a lot of other videos out there. It's a rebadged baby lock and it's the jazz. So you can always Google baby lock jazz and you'll see the videos that baby lock have put up, which are also really good. But well, you've got mine. My unboxing was a little bit, oh, it was the first video I'd done. But we're getting there. I'm learning how to talk to you guys. The Aurifil. And I'm gonna use a white bobbin so that you can see the contrast between top tension and bottom tension. So up here, this dial, it has your one to four. That's your stitch length, so whatever you're requiring. It also has the stitch length for your buttonhole. Fantastic, I like to sit just below three. So this little dial, the next one along, has a lot more numbers. It goes from zero all the way to seven. That's your zigzag. So if you're on zero, your needle goes all the way to this side. There's a little dot between three and four. That's dead set center. All the way to seven, it moves all the way to that side. I wouldn't be able to do that at the moment because I have just got my half inch. So we are going to go back to dead center. This little one, I've got a bit of dust on mine, is your tension. I'm getting obsessed with my dust. Find what's best for your thread. Thinner thread, more tension. Thicker thread, less tension. Why? The tensioners only push so hard. So if you've got something thick, it's going to put more tension on it because that thread is taking up more space. If you're using a really thin thread, it's got lots of space, so it's not going to have much tension. So bring your tension in, it'll hold that thinner thread better. So let's get the thread. You've got your spool holder, put it on there. Put your little cap on. A little hem. You can go out and buy one of those expensive-ish stands for the back, but if you've got the big reel of thread you want to run under, run over, sorry. A bulldog clip. I clip him up here. And you'll see it in a lot of my videos. Actually, he comes this way. No, he goes that way. Then my thread will come up through there, through there, and down. And normally I'll push that out as well. So it sits out a bit. So it's bringing it straight up from the spool and it works. If it's a bit of a wonky spool, I'll throw it in a cup or something, but most of the time it just sits back there quite happily. But we're talking about this little guy today. He's on there nice and tight. Just drop him down. We have the metal clip here, which is this part here. These are your instructions for your bobbin, which we've already gone through. So we're gonna go through the other part of it. So I take my thread. I always use two hands. You've got it tight, so it's easier to work with. So we're going under that part, which is there. We're going under through there and staying straight. There's a little instruction here, as you can see nice up close. Then I tend to hold my finger down here so that it's going to go, make sure it goes the right side of that little I hold it down nice and tight there so it can go around this little clip and under then we come down there's a little bit of metal that comes out here I always tend to go to the right side of it not sure why habit. Remember, foot up. Foot up opens your tensioners so that that's going to then pull into there. Then we're going down round number three. We're going back up. We've got this that goes up and down like all the machines. 
You're gonna hook onto that. Down we go. Then we have number five step, which you go down, you bring around and behind there. Then there's another little clip bit here that you go around. And the hook side, pull it through. So we've got to this point. Let's use the needle threader. I like to bring it over, you pull it down, hold onto it there so that you get it under that hook. You can let go. Push it further down. It's got hold of the needle now. And then I can see it's definitely got hold of the thread because the needle's bending back. Let go of your thread and that'll lift up. And there's a cute little hook, a loop of thread back here. I push to one side and I grab with my other fingers and pull it through. So that's the needle threaded. Match a machine from the spool, under, round, down, up, around, down, through there, through there, and into the needle. The bobbin itself. So your bobbin cover, easy to pull out. Just pull that, lift up, as you can see, out it comes. The bobbin goes in just like every other top drop bobbin. You have your bobbin and it's coming across from the top across to the left. Drop it in. Then in here, like all the others, you have that little hook that you've got to get onto. And it goes under. Now, crafters, this is a good point and a good topic. This is the one part I don't like. I can go run it under there. And it's got a little blade there and that will cut the end off. However, I can go and put that on there, cut that thread. In fact, I'm gonna show you what it does. Cover on, cut the thread. thread. Technically, that should be right now. So I'm just by hand, down we go. Catch that white thread and it didn't pull it up. So now I've really got to pull it up with this part. Now, can you see how much thread came up? That's the tip of it there, a centimetre, that much. That's again hard to get in and grab onto. So it takes a bit then to pull it. So what I prefer to do have yourself a long tail, drop it in as normal, hook it onto that little arm that's in there for the tension. I don't put my cover on yet, I hold that, I go round and now you can see the black thread hooking onto the white thread and up she comes. See that? Straight away. Now I'm onto it. Another thing about the machine, always when you're cutting your threads, pull them to the edge here. Don't use your side cutter. Your threads are not long enough and as soon as you start sewing your needle thread will fall out and you'll be cussing all day long. Pull it out till it's over the edge before you cut it. Works a whole lot better. So then I just go and push it all down, 
to the back and there we go. What's it like to sew with you say? I'll show you. Just some pretty little pink fabric. Needle down. So now the needle's down, the tension's going to be engaged. I'm not holding on to the thread. Look how nice and straight. Well, it's starting to go a little bit wobbly. I probably need, I went a little bit wobbly, but I probably need to clean my feed dogs because I use it. So, pull to the edge and I cut. That's the black. That's the white. Perfect tension. Now let me see if it's going to do what I said it does if you use this side cutter. So we cut our threads on the side cutter. Up and down. See how it pulled? You don't have a lot. It actually went through amazingly enough. Editor Cassie here. Mum was interrupted by a phone call before she could finish the video, so that's my job now. As you can see, uh, the one time that she needed the needle to um thread after using the thread cutter, it didn't do that, which is just life but it does happen a lot. Personally, I don't like using the thread cutter just because it rubs me the wrong way. I just don't like thread cutters. Whatever you prefer, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's just a basic walkthrough of how she throws a machine, really. We found that a lot of people are having issues when it comes to free motion quilting. And one of the things that seems to fix it is not only playing with your tension, but also your stitch length. I know when I'm doing, when I'm stitching in the ditch, I have a longer stitch length. And I'm pretty sure you need a smaller stitch length for free motion, but I'm not sure. Just generally, the best thing to do is, if you're having issues with free motion, mess with your tension and mess with your stitch length, and then it will come good. But yeah, message us below, my mum will be able to tell you anything anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you want to know anything else about the quilter's choice, and we'll be sure to, I don't know, get onto it or let you know. And you can, as always, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, a little bit of Twitter. Oh, right here on YouTube, press subscribe if you want to see more and like the video if you did like it. And hope you guys are having a lovely week. Talk to you later. Bye.